So, welcome everyone. <laughs> um, we're doing a presentation together about paragraphs. Uh, we need to switch microphones, so we are introducing each other when we start presenting. Um, this is about paragraphs, one of our like focus topics at MD Systems recently. Um, I'm Miro Dietiker, founder of MD Systems. We are currently top contributors on like Drupal.org. And yes, please. Louder, please. louder even louder. Yes. So uh, we have many different initiatives, uh, active, uh, working a lot on media, and paragraphs is very important for us. Now, first, why? For us, I think paragraphs is the future of content creation. Let me quickly explain you why, like, you know, it makes a big difference. On the left side, you see like this WYSIWYG thingy that is really hard to manage limitations or to, to keep control. And on the right side, you have this more structured approach where we have components and things that are manageable. And if you think about the modern demands of uh, web applications and with content creation, people are asking to put more power towards the, the editor. So the editor wants to have more flexibility and still you want to, like, you do not want to have the site builder being involved in creating rich content pieces. And when you think about the whole decoupled uh, development, uh, actually you need structured data to make a decoupled experience work well. And Paragraphs provides you this. Finally, through working with paragraphs, you have less content types, simpler, most, uh, much more simpler choice about, like, I'm just creating a piece of content, and less huge content types with just, like, 50, 100 fields to cover every possible case, because the editor, the editor just picks, while creating content, what he really needs. And finally, through these paragraph types that we are creating, we are creating better, use, better reusability of pieces, even across multiple websites. Down, yes. Ooh. Okay. About the status, we are feature complete, as in fully ported from Drupal 7, and with RC5, we think we are almost ready to release, and uh, we can recommend it in production. Who of you did use paragraphs in production? Awesome. <laughs> yes, what it chips? Paragraphs itself, the paragraphs project, is really only the widget, so kind of the thingy that interacts, for, uh, that you're interacting with when creating content. It it's supposed to replace the body field where you have all these uh, monster WYSIWYG controls. And you actually need entity reference revisions, the, 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 the dependency module that provides the field type itself that is kind of how the reference between the paragraph entity and the node is stored. So when you want to put the paragraph on top, like on a content type, you're creating an entity reference revision field pointing to a paragraph. It also provides this concept of a composite relationship, so the paragraph entities are really physically uh, or conceptually part of the node itself, which means like the node is deleted, paragraphs are deleted. And if I'm looking at the diff of the node, the paragraph is also shown in the diff inside. So it really maintains this relationship. And it provides the formatter also to display the paragraphs that are composite of the node that you want to display. And we have paragraph type permissions, so that you can assign specific types of paragraphs to specific users and limit permissions. Otherwise, without the module, it's basically everyone can create any type of paragraphs. We started adding a demo module, so if you want to play with Paragraphs, just install Paragraphs demo, and you have some quick intro overview on the front page of your website. Don't do it on production. It's really supposed to be a demo for testing purposes. Um, it has some 
tiny example, like a, a paragraph type that you just can click through and experience how paragraphs works. A few features to mention about like what we can do today. We are supporting the one-to-one -one field translation. And with translation, we mean basically you're saying the content type is translatable, but the entity reference revisions field is not set to translator. And please don't do it. It's clearly defined that it's not possible. Like, instead, I'm trying to explain you what, uh, like, why. Um, the paragraph itself and the field on the paragraph, say the text field, is like you're marking this text field as translatable. And through this, you're capable of adding the translation in, in the translated language. If you would try to make the entity reference revisions field translatable, it would mean that you could have totally different paragraphs and different structure in a translated node than on the original like source node, and we are not supporting this case. So many reports about bugs are related to this misconfiguration, and we try to avoid it. Uh, we try to improve the UI somehow to, to avoid it. Um, and we are fully supporting nested paragraphs. Uh, actually, I had a long time to understand how useful this feature is. Um, but meanwhile, with Thinking about building complex, rich content structures, you realize that on a top level, like say this is everything is the huge node, and then you say you're adding a paragraph that is a row, and then you can add another paragraph that is a column, and you define the width. And inside of this paragraph, you add a specific text block, and on the level of the column, you could, for instance, apply background styles or stuff like this. Through this, you can create multiple types of grids or even slide setups where you can like, empower the user to freely decide how he wants to mix the available components based on the content piece he's about to create. And Yes, we cleaned the UI a lot. It looks so simple, but it was like it took months of work to make it like that. And just like it starts like this, and you just decide about what piece you want to add from the selection of the paragraph types you have. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Jeroen Bobbeldijk, uh, jeroen.b on Drupal.org. I'm the Paragraphs maintainer and I basically started Paragraphs. Uh, I created the Drupal 7 version and Drupal 8 version. Currently, mostly working on Drupal 7 while MD Systems is maintaining Drupal 8 and improving. Uh, I'm going to give you some quick examples of how to use paragraphs, of how you could use paragraphs. Uh, we have some demo sites, this one uh, that uh, we created at our company. Uh, so what we did here was all the content between the main menu and the, fo and the footer, you can see it on the pictures, is all paragraphs. So this is a paragraph, this paragraph, this is a paragraph, and then we also created paragraphs that have, that is a row, and then everything is a column. So inside this row, there's another row, which is this. And this is a column, this is a column, and this is three columns. Uh, we also uh, allowed the editors to embed views, so they can actually simply change this to another view, and then it will show blog posts uh, or employees. Uh, currently, it shows their showcases. Uh, Wanderers also sent us some uh, example sites. Uh, I think we will publish the slides later. Uh, so you can also just check out the links uh, on yourself. Maybe check out the HTML if you're interested. Uh, so what I really like here is that I really went berserk with the, <laughs> with the paragraph types. So they 
kind of like embedded four levels of paragraph divs if you want, maybe even uh, more. So all the, all of this is also a paragraph. This is a slider paragraph uh, in which slides were added, which are also paragraphs, which has an entity reference to a node which contains the images. So it's uh, really crazy, but they can the content editor can change anything they want. Uh, these are the sites from MZ Labs. They created a, a fleet portal for AMAC. It's like a big uh, car importer from Swiss. Uh, what they did, the site is really simple. It just shows all the cars. But uh, they can pick if they want to show full column, two column. They can even split between uh, one small column and one big column, and then the position of the columns. And then they uh, can even add uh, certain deals between there. but. The most important point is that the content editor can change the site anytime they want without the involvement of a developer or a site builder. So now we're going to give the microphone to John. So, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is John Gustavo Choque Condori. It's a bit long, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm actually a trainee at MD Systems for already five months, and I've uh, I've been just working with a Drupal 8 version of Paragraphs, and well, I'm from Bolivia. Um, well, it's always really good to know that there's a lot of people working in Paragraphs. At least in the community, you can see a lot of discussions, a lot of issues that have a lot of comments. And this is all, these are all the people that have been working on it, that have at least one commit uh, uh, credit. And well, right now in MD Systems, we work from Zurich in Switzerland. And we have a lot of people that is active from there. Uh, and these people have been uh, started from the RC, uh, before RC4 version of the module in Drupal 8 and have been doing an amazing work changing some stuff that needs work. First of all, I think one thing that needs to mention is that we set the default button to be a drop down to change as Drupal 8. Then we add a test coverage because for us the quality assurance is something really important. And if we don't really have a test coverage, then it's a bit harder to implement, you know, features. Uh, the demo module was initially not uh, something that was really important for us, but in the end, uh, it helped a lot, at least for developers, to testing and everything. Also, one thing is the multilingual support, because previously. Uh, <laughs> You know, paragraphs. There, there are a lot of discussions now about how the the paragraphs should be translatable. But initially, the multilingual support was added by MD Systems. We also added revision support, diff plugins, and now they are working in Drupal in the Drupal 8 version, really good, I think. And yeah, nested paragraphs was included also also with MD Systems. Um, this is a small overview about all all the road to get to RC5. And first, I would say that this is like the Git uh, log of RC4. I'm not here yet because I started to work on, on paragraphs uh, some months before after this. And honestly, I didn't know anything about Drupal, not even what uh, entity was. And it was a bit challenging to understand all this world. And well, we started with a composite relationship. As Miro said, it's, a, it's a, the relationship between the parent and the children. And it's based on entity reference revisions. But we needed to do a, a data migration that was really hard in the beginning, because we needed to provide a, fu a update function for all the paragraphs. And uh, when you talk about revisions, it's always hard, because sometimes you need to, to load like if an uh, entity has revisions or not, you have to decide that. And it was actually pretty challenging. 
after seeing um, how multilingual was working paragraphs, there was one strange bug that in the beginning we found that the buttons were disappearing when we were translating. So in the beginning it was just a small bug that we didn't think that it was that big. But we realized that the paragraphs that were stored in the database were stored with different languages when you change the node language when you save the node. So it was all time creating like a paragraph in English originally, and then you, s you change the language of the note to German, and then you have a paragraph in English, a paragraph in German, and then you can create tons of paragraphs with different languages. So what was the fix? Essentially, it's really easy. Just check if we are translating or not. And well, because of that, we found a lot of edge cases, like uh, because we, we got a lot of uh, production sites feedback, people who were working with paragraphs in production sites and they saw the, the, the issues and the problems, and we could add a lot of test coverage with it. So one thing I would like to say is like never rely on form rebuilds, because initially that was our idea, to, to check if a rebuild was, was being uh, like performed in a node, because when you change the language in a node uh, when you are creating, it, it adds a rebuild, but you can any module can add a rebuild in a, when you are creating a node. So it's it's not reliable at least for multilingual in this case. This another multilingual bug was the stale language source, since we know that some paragraphs were in different languages, and we didn't know exactly how to do how to set the language. Sometimes you add a translation for the node, and you have uh, a node with a, a node in English with a French paragraph, and you try to add a paragraph translation, then what do you do? You cannot add a, paragraph tra a French translation for an existing one. So what we basically did is get the existing tra translation. So now, even if um, there is some problems with the already existing data, we can get the existing translation, and it still works. It was actually a bit hard to find a way to make it work, because it's, it was breaking all time. But now, every time that you save a node be in the RC version, it works perfectly with all the paragraphs with the same language. And yeah, also, it, it, it like it's a lot of extra complexity to do that, but it's, it has a lot of test coverage, so we can rely on that. There were also a lot of validation bugs that we found. And there was a big problem about unused, unused revisions created. Because every time that you were previewing the node, there were some new revisions being created in the background. And we wanted to change that, and we needed basically um, a fix in entity reference revisions, adding an interface. But it was also important to add test coverage for the preview of the node, because it may break. Because initially we were saving a new revision, you preview the revision. You are not previewing the the one the, the data that you have. So we needed to add this size of fix, and we need to check that the revision pointing was the correct one. And the host entity, when the, you create a revision in host entity, is also created just in, in the paragraphs, but not creating more than that. Another validation bug was that some entities cannot be referenced. And it was actually really easy to, to fix, but really hard to find, because we couldn't find the steps to reproduce. And even uh, there was a lot of discussion about that in Drupal.org. And there were not really clear ways. So there were some information that we were storing that was not important for us, that we just drop it. And well, it's even better and lighter now because of that. And we also need a demo fix, because the people was testing in demo. And since our demo is based on configuration, it, we never updated it, and they were still getting this this demo, uh, the same error with demo. So never use demo for production sites. And yeah, after all these changes, like uh, so many multilingual bugs and everything, we had to do a lot of uh, uh, like updates for the entity for the module, and we need to provide a lot of update methods that were initially just the composite relationship. But then when you realize that there are some things, for example, the change date of your entity, of your paragraph, is not needed anymore if you have 
if you're basing your idea in a composite relationship with a node, right? So we just dropped that, and we needed to um, uh, cut the database and make some truncate some fields, and also do some entity updates. And oh, there, are, there is still some upgrade paths doing in in the in the dev version of the module. And we also had a Paragraphs workshop in MD Systems in the office of MD Systems in Zurich. Uh, in during these two days, and we discussed a lot of critical blockers. Uh, we had a lot of discussions about real-world requirements, a lot of multilingual, uh, how to support uh, translations for paragraphs. That's also a really big discussion in Drupal.org. You can find a lot of issues about that. And then we finally got to RC5. It was a long road, so many discussions, so many commits that uh, still you cannot see RC4 there, but at least now the translate like the multilingual support we can say that it's safe to use it in a production site how long have you been working well i've been working in paragraphs for uh, 3 months and well i can say that uh, in the beginning when you don't, like as a beginner developer it's always hard to understand all these changes but when you get, for me at least, it's really important to get feedback from production sites. You can see what are those edge cases, and then you can you can like ask for support requests. There are people who, who ask for support requests, and there are actually really things that make sense, but you didn't think about it. So it's it's always hard and beautiful in some ways to think about it. So yeah, at least for me, paragraphs was the module who helped me a lot to enter to this Drupal world. Yes. So, <clears throat> now that we are there, like, ready to release, ready to use it, there's still a lot of things that we plan for the future. First of all, like we have all these discussions, like how can we improve the situation? And we tried to think about introducing new patterns to simplify content creation. But after all these discussions, we decided that we definitely want to stick to the current concept of this backend editing thing and focus a lot on it and improve it even more. And we think that if you work with these nested paragraphs, we definitely need better ways to, let's say, quickly collapse everything to better, uh, like, if you collapse this stuff, that you still have an idea of what is inside a paragraph, like providing a collapsed summary. And uh, with the nested things, even allow to drag and drop things, like, so if I have some piece of text that is deep, nested deep inside a slide and I want to put it to the top level. It's a very complex operation because it goes across multiple nesting levels and multiple fields. So we want to support that with drag and drop. And we want to also allow you to easily add a paragraph uh, between certain existing paragraphs. And finally, lots of small improvements um, and like we are definitely looking for great inputs uh, to perfectly make the usability like as good as we can. Um, and then we think that Paragraphs has a great opportunity in simplifying content management and content creation through providing a collection of best practices. Like everyone like, like, let's say you build three, four sites with paragraphs. You suddenly realize that you're doing the same thing again and again and again. And uh, we, Wondrous, started a paragraphs. Uh, what's the name? Paragraphs Collection, something. And 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 we want to centralize this. We want to open it for collaboration and provide it as, let's say. Initially, it will be a small set of standard thingies that are directly originated also with working with the media maintainers, working with all the maintainers of, of the different modules, where we say, yes, we can provide something that makes sense with 
also in case like you want to work, you want to use it out of the box, including some uh, CSS and design things so that it's really usable out of the box without the need of custom CSS. But still, you might want to drop all the CSS we, pro pro uh, we provide and do it fully custom. And still, you might want to extend these types uh, with your custom fields that are important for you. So it's supposed to be a quick out-of-the-box start that is a basic set of things from where you develop your custom set. It will not be a distribution because it's supposed to be reused in multiple distributions as a common piece for the content creation and it's supposed to be reused for everyone who is building on top of paragraphs. And you're possibly just picking a few of these types that we provide because you like them and you might drop the other ones that are part of the collection because they are not relevant to you. And there is always this discussion, like if you, if you start to do this more site building like things of overview pages, let's say you start to put testimonials on your website, you suddenly realize that you might put the same testimonial 10 times on different sites. So we would want to create an optional module where you can pick a paragraph, put it into something like a library, and then you can uh, like link it so that you kind of have this common reusable paragraph element somehow. Uh, and it's really definitely optional, so we will not promote every paragraph you create into this library. It's really a, a decision and you will need to add a label to it so that you can find it and that you can manage these these collections. And still, like once we are there, like once we have done the best thing we could with the backend editing, there is all this discussion about how can we better support a page builder with, for example, a more visual approach to display how the nesting works. And like this is someone who did it uh, for, for Drupal already, for Drupal 8. Um, it's really interesting to see it. And this is, for instance, a totally different project that has somehow a similar concept. It's Divi Builder. Um, that is, for instance, not showing the edit element here. That is just visually showing the nesting. And you edit on, on an overlay, while this here is still trying to keep the editing inside the, the structure. And uh, Or it could also be just as simple as Medium that is just removing everything and uh, basically it's a little bit related to even quick edit like uh, and if you click here then you choose the thing you you want to add and like really just more the inline thing uh, like and one of the option would be to basically improve quick edit and add the missing functionality um, but we are not yet sure like how far we can go with that and uh, yeah, if it is even the right solution. Like we learned that basically no one is using it uh, as it is now uh, from, from all the people that have been part of our workshop. Finally, thanks to all the sponsors of the event and thanks for the audience. Any questions to us? Yes. <laughs> like someone has uh, fixed the serializer um, to make, like to make uh, 
deployment of paragraphs work. Um, but like that's a more personal opinion. Um, we do not work with default, uh, like the, the Drupal default REST resources for any kind of decoupled applications because we think that that you should that we should shape like better resources that are more more semantic and and that better fit the like yeah you you will realize that that there are a lot of limitations with these uh, standard resources from Drupal and I, and I still believe that Drupal has a long way to improve them uh, in that domain Yeah, it um, would make sense. Like, if, if you have a great solution to this, then it, it perfectly makes sense to uh, connect, to provide these, these solutions. And even, like, in case you have decoupled applications, like, uh, I, I could imagine that the, the set of paragraph types, um, you know, in case you have an Angular somehow front end, that we could also provide the counterpart for each uh, paragraph type or so that that uh, kind of these things like an alternative decoupled front end could also be shipped as an example application yeah yes we are still here like you can also join us and ask in person thanks a lot and enjoy the day